Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics and today we are going to be doing part two of the fish room tour. If you haven't seen part one yet, I highly recommend you check it out. We looked at the fish on the other side of the fish room. Today, we're going to be looking at the fish on this side of the fish room, so stay tuned. Alright everybody, so this is the other side of the fish room. We've got the 150, the 275s, 255s, and then over here we've got 420s along with a couple 29s on the bottom, 9, 10 gallons, and then as we come to this side, We've got 333 longs and 240s. All right, so why don't we go ahead and start with the 150. So this is our 150 gallon. We recently rescaped this tank. A lot of stuff going on here. Very odd mix of fish for sure. Uh, a couple things, those tinfoil barbs, the ballast shark. Uh, we are, this is a tough one because this tank isn't big enough for these fish and these fish are very old. So we're kind of left in the conundrum. Do we move the fish to someone who's got a larger tank and risk moving fish that are about nine years old so they can have a larger space or do we leave them in here knowing that they are as old as they are large fish generally don't move well from one tank to another especially if you have to transport them large tinfoil barbs are especially troubling when you have to move them especially difficult when you have to move them so we're, we're trying to figure out the best situation for those three fish the two tinfoil barbs the ballast shark uh, again, it's an odd mix of fish, but it's worked. There's not any aggression really going on here. Obviously, the big star of the tank, well, I say obviously, but we think the big star of the tank is this Geophagus cyrenamensis. Uh, amazing color, amazing fish, amazing finnage. Uh, we really, really like that fish. But we've got some nice ones in here besides him, the Frontosa. Uh, we've got a couple of gold severums. We have a red shoulder severum in here as well. Of course, you got the angelfish up here. Got a very strange mix of fish. We've got the garami back there a very old electric blue Akara, and uh, we've got a Raphael cat that is quite large. He's back there in the back, just kind of hanging out. At least eight or 10 bristlenose plecos that are responsible for keeping this tank looking good. We've got some Emperor Tetras, again, and, and there's a loach over there, but it's a strange mix, but they get along. There's no real aggression. No one's really chasing each other around too much. But we do, I recognize we do have to do something with these two tinfoil barbs and ballast shark. It's just a matter of what to do with them and making sure that if we transfer them to a larger tank or somebody else's tank that they actually make it there and, uh, and are healthy. So we love this tank. It's a great tank. It's gone through many iterations since we've had it. It was a cichlid tank, Buna tank, peacock tank. Uh, it's been a lot of different things and I think I really like the way it is right now. So this is our 150 gallon community tank with the very strange mix of fish. So now we can come on over and look at these 275s and we'll look at the 255s. And so over here we have the bottom 75. And again, this is a community tank. It is the oldest tank in our fish room. And again, there is an odd mix of fish in here as well. We've got our red tail shark. We've got a leaf tinapoma, a large green severum. He's kind of the tank boss in this tank. We have some black skirt tetras. We have what I believe to be a Geophagus steindachneri female. Uh, that is the female that we would probably pair up with the male that's in the 125 that I showed you earlier. We have a pearl garami. There's even a keyhole cichlid still in here, uh, but it, it's a great tank. There is a really cool uh, Vergmorii loach in here. Uh, usually hides in those rocks, but again, most of these fish get along. Red tail sharks, definitely not recommended for your average community tank, but because these other fish are relatively uh, aggressive themselves. We don't generally have any issues. You can see the green severum, nice looking fish. Maybe not as nice in my opinion as the gold severums or the red shoulder severums or some of the, the more specialized severums, but it's still a great looking fish. Uh, I love the leaf tinapoma over there, but this is the bottom 75. So in this top 75, we have yet another Geophagus. This is Geophagus pelagrini. We absolutely love Geophagus in our fish room. Uh, they get a lot of color. For some of them like these ones, you have to have some patience. They don't color up right away. We've had these now for just over a year. They're slow growers. They're slow to color up. They're slow to mature, but once they do, they are absolutely well worth the wait. Uh, here we can also see some white skirt tetras. They're in there because our geophagus obviously are a little bit shy, especially when there is a camera, unfortunately. But the white skirt tetras, for the most part, bring them out from uh, behind the tank because they were hiding a lot. That was their job. They're doing a great job of it. Uh, we also have some plecos in here, kind of keeping the tank clean. 
but this is again this is another tank where it, it's going to take some patience we've you know again it's been over a year and still not a lot of color we got these geophagus when they were probably about the size of these white skirt tetras but they're they're getting to the point now where it just seems like every month we get a little bit more color uh, but once they do color up, they're going to be pretty awesome. And this is going to be, I think, a really, really nice looking tank once they're, they're showing their true colors. So this is our top 55. These are, uh, we have a big group of breeding Eureka Red Cichlids, one male. I think nine females are in here. And right now, about half of them are holding. Uh, we also have this pair of sulfur head cichlids. You know, the male's the more yellow one, the female's just a plain silver one. I really think these two are gonna wind up taking this tank over and these Eureka Reds are gonna wind up at a swap or an auction uh, as a big breeding group for people who want, would like to breed them. We've still got a lot of babies in the fish room, so it's not like we won't have any of these, but I think I wanna make this tank all about these sulfur heads right now and see if we can have the same luck with them that we've had with these Eureka Reds. All right, everybody, so I fed the fish a little bit but it was feeding time, I wanted to get the large Eureka Red male out, and there he was. So that might be all that we see of him, but at least he was out and about uh, getting some food. So in this 55, it's all about Geophagus, Geophagus Tapajos. This is one of my favorite Geophagines. Uh, we've got four in here. It looks like probably two males and two females. Uh, the male and the female will sometimes hang out over here by the slate and occasionally they will lay a bunch of eggs, which is pretty cool. Uh, so this is the, I mean, this, that's the fish that's in here. We've got some bristlenose plecos. Amazingly enough, the bristlenose plecos, I put two in here, happen to be a male and a female, and now there's probably at least 12 in here. So I know the geophagus are eating some of them, but there's a fair number that are also surviving, but this is a fantastic geophagus. And of the geophagians, they stay pretty small. So uh, that male there is maybe four and a half, five inches. They're not gonna get a lot larger than that. So, uh, you know, where a lot of these geophagus that I've shown you, the Pelagrini will get close to a foot, the Brazilianzas get close to a foot, Cyrenomensis in the 150. If he's a male, he'll get close to a foot, and I think he is. Uh, you know, these guys will stay a little bit smaller. Uh, the wine Miller Eye was another one that's going to get close to a foot, but we love, love, love geophagians, and I think uh, the reason for that kind of speaks for itself. The colors are awesome. Uh, these guys, I would also say, though, are some of the more, at least when it comes to species aggression, conspecific aggression, they tend to be some of the more aggressive geophagus that I've seen so far with one another. But when I've had them in other tanks with South Americans and even some community fish, for the most part, they ignore other fish. They they don't necessarily like one another, especially the, the head honcho over there, that big male, but they more or less ignore fish. And in fact, I've seen these fish get bullied by severums and I've even had large geophagus topos, well I say large, but about as large as that male, get bullied by a Bolivian ram. So, but these are cool fish, uh, hoping to breed them and, and keep breeding them and keep getting the eggs because they are pretty darn awesome, great color. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the 420s and we will also look at the 229s. This is a fish I really, really like. This is a bottom 29 gallon. Uh, these are Cryptoheros nanoluteus and they are really cool. As you can see, they're pretty small and they stay fairly small. Uh, this is a fish that I would have no problem putting in a, a community tank, not necessarily in a big group, and certainly not if they're breeding, but as a single showcase sort of fish, a centerpiece fish, I would have no issues doing that. Uh, again, with them being in this community, yeah, they're going to be a little bit more aggressive, kind of chase each other around a bit, but nothing too bad. I mean, for the most part, they, they are relatively calm. Uh, you can see here, again, when we're looking at the colors, pretty awesome fish. I mean, uh, the colors are quite amazing. Uh, jo Joanna set this tank up a while back. The jungle bell's finally starting to grow. The, the crypts in here are kind of uh, doing their thing. They're growing a little bit, but it's, it's really about the fish. And I'm hoping that we can get these guys to breed because they do have such a great personality. They're, they're awesome fish. The colors are really starting to show. They have these nice blue eyes. We really like them a lot, and it's just a fish that we're, we're excited to have. So this is the other bottom 29, and this is a tank, quite honestly, I wish I would just spend more time enjoying. Uh, we've got four black angels in here, and you can see them there. They're super calm, and then we've got the rasboras here. There are also seven or eight, at least, 
Epistogramma mendezi. We've had these fish for quite some time. Uh, relatively peaceful, very calm. They are. They can be quite reclusive unless there are other fish, dither fish that will tell them, hey, everything is okay. Color-wise, you can see here, not super colorful. In fact, they're probably one of the least colorful of the epistles that I've seen. But definitely a, a hardy type of epistle. Haven't had any breeding success with them. For the most part, I think the, the eggs and the fry are gonna need softer water than what we have. But I'm happy with them just because they've been such cool inhabitants. They were in the 23 gallon bow front for a while. Uh, we moved them here and they have been wonderful inhabitants just kind of hanging out and you know they eat their flake food and they'll they like some brine shrimp we also have a scarlet battis in here we also have a couple pygmy sunfish in here but those fish are incredibly difficult to find because they are so shy so this is the other 29 gallon we've got some jungle valve we've got a nice sword i've got some a lot of jungle valve floating up here just kind of growing out uh, we've got some crypts in here as well and that this long crypt uh, spiralis i believe is back there in addition to all the other plants and in case you wanted to see the scarlet baddus there he is just kind of hanging out in that sword plant that's kind of his area so this is our neolamprologus ocelotus tank gold ocelotus uh, there are what appear to be at least three males and two females uh, we have a, a youngling over there on the far left hand side there's a bristlenose pleco in here as well as well as a few snails uh, we were getting fry from this tank and then it's been a little while since we've seen any i'm hoping that we get some soon because it looks like every fish is guarding a shell which is a good sign uh, these these guys for shell dwellers are probably as mean as i've seen them you can see the female back there i don't know if you can see her uh, in between the rocks over there but uh, she is really quite something uh, but yeah these are definitely when it comes to shell dwellers they are probably the meanest ones that we've had and we've had a lot we've had the Maltes I've already shown you the Maltes the Brevis the Meliagris upstairs we have Similis uh, and these guys are definitely the meanest of them quite possibly the most beautiful but they are they're pretty aggressive and if we're gonna get serious about breeding them I think what we're gonna wind up doing is just cutting this down to a pair one male one female and maybe moving the rest of them to another tank so that they can be either part of a community or possibly set up two breeding tanks because this situation right here is not ideal for breeding it's not working out the best but they're super cool fish so have you ever wondered what it would look like if you let your tank just become completely overrun with jungle valve this is what you get this is a 20 long and yes it is completely overrun with jungle valve there is one anubius over here to the right uh, fish you're not going to be able to see them so i'm not going to spend a ton of time here but we've got three bolivian rams we have a lot of really cool brown darters in here in fact there's one right over here i'm going to try to get a close-up here in a moment uh, i think probably the most visible fish and the ones i think i like the most in this tank are way over here towards the top these are these lamp eye killies i love them they stay tiny they get these really nice bright blue eyes yellow body little black dorsal fins they're super cool i wish i had about three dozen of them in a larger setup i think that would certainly be something uh, if i had maybe you know them set up in a 33 long or a 55 i would definitely put two or three dozen in there they're just really really awesome fish but this is basically a at this point it's a jungle valve grow out tank and i think what's going to happen with this tank is some of these these nicer guppies that we have that are in tens right now that i keep saying hey they're in quarantine uh, this is going to be a tank where I'm, we're going to pull those three bolivian rams out put them in a different community and then put the guppies in here so that they can have fry and the fry will probably be fairly well protected with the java moss that we have back there and the jungle valve this is probably a tank where that's going to happen so uh, that's the story right now and i wanted to show you one of these brown darters there's probably six or seven of them in here they're they're kind of shy but and of course the jungle valve doesn't help that they're all in here but it's if you really watch this tank sometimes you'll you'll see something moving in the jungle valve that's these little brown darters uh, they were brought to us from somebody in the greenwater the greenwater aquarius society cool fish they're just super hard to spot sometimes and a little bit shy so this is not a conducive setup to see them but they're pretty awesome all right so right next door this is another another 20 long and here, the main fish in here, unfortunately, they're kind of shy, and that is the pelvic acromus subocelotus. These are fish that used to be in Luke's 10-gallon tank up in his room before he got his 
really awesome guppies. So we put them down here and the idea was one, they needed a larger tank than a 10 gallon because we've got about six of them. And two, we hoped that they would come out a little bit more than they were up in his 10 gallon. Uh, so far they've been ex pretty shy fish. The guppies are here. There is a betta in here, really just to kind of serve as dither fish so that they know there's nothing to worry about. Uh, I have gotten these fish on video, at least the females, where they turn an extraordinarily like black and gold color with a purple underbelly when they are ready to breed. I will probably cut in with a little bit of video just to kind of show you what that looks like because it's, it's quite the sight. Uh, here you can see a male kind of sticking his head out of that cave and there's probably a female in there. We haven't had any fry yet that I have noticed, but they are in there quite often. So I am hopeful that at some point we will see fry. Uh, again, the guppies are here just to kind of let them know, hey, everything's fine. Uh, there is a betta in here as well, and it is in good shape. Let's see if we can get him on camera. And there you have it. It's just a bluish purple one. Uh, not like any particular awesome strain, but it's a cool fish. Uh, so that is kind of what's going on in this tank. Uh, it's, it's a fun tank. When they're out and about, they're really cool. Unfortunately, sometimes they are very shy. So I fed the pelvic acromus sub ocelata so I could get them out. And so there you have them. There's the males. There is a female over there as well. But you can see them out. Pretty fish, cool fish. I like their shape. Uh, so there you go. Just wanted to show them to you. Okay, so what is this giant mess of plants, you ask? This is a 20 long filled with guppy grass. Why? Because the boys have a red cherry shrimp breeding project that they're doing. They went around the fish room a while back, a number of months ago, maybe it's probably been about six months now, and they found eight or so, eight or 10, of the best red cherry shrimp that they could find in the fish room. And I told them that they could have this tank if they went and found the best shrimp that they could find, they put them in here and this would basically be there. So any of the shrimp that they sell would be exclusively their money. As you might imagine, they were very eager to do that. And so they did. And now this tank is, I don't even know how many shrimp are in here. My guess is 500, but within about six months, we went from 10 to about 500. And there are some very, very, very tiny babies in here. Uh, super small. Uh, there's also some lemon drop long fin plecos that you can see at the bottom of your screen. Last, or at least when I put them in here, we had four of them and I see two of them right there, I believe. And I'm sure the other two are in here somewhere, but with all this guppy grass, it's hard to see. One of the combinations that has always worked well for us in terms of breeding is bristlenose plecos and cherry shrimp. So uh, that has been a good combination for us and it's, I think it's gonna work in here as well. I think when those long fin plecos get a little bit larger, they will probably start kicking out fry as well. Uh, but this is a, it's really just about breeding shrimp and this is basically how you do it. It's not flashy, but a lot of guppy grass and take it easy on the water changes and this is what you get after about six months or so. You get hundreds of them. All right, so we can take a look at the 333 longs on this wall, and then we'll also take a look at the 240 gallon breeders. All right, so now we are on the other side of the fish room, and these, as some of you know, are some of my favorite fish in the fish room. Total mistake, didn't even think we were buying these when we got them from our auction. The bag was labeled Firemouth Cichlids. These were not fire mouths, and we've figured that out shortly after we got them. But they, I, I'm so glad that we got them because they are absolutely phenomenal fish. Uh, they are red devils, and they're stuck in a 40 gallon right now because again, we weren't planning to buy these fish. They are going to get a new home. Again, we're looking at uh, adding some tanks to our fish room, and when we do, they're going to be large tanks, hopefully at least 125s or above. And part of the reason we're doing that is for them because I am so impressed with these fish. They are really, really, really something to behold. Uh, we're starting to see the large male here. He's becoming a little bit more aggressive, assertive. Uh, Eli has taken to name him Roger. So that is Roger. Uh, he is the main guy and we've got three others. They don't have names. Uh, so maybe we'll have to come up with that as a community. But Roger over there, he's, he's the main guy. So he needs a bigger tank. 
we may try to put all four of them in the same tank. Uh, we'll see, because red devils, as some of you know, can be very aggressive, and the fact that the four of them are living in a 40-gallon breeder right now, and nobody is getting beat up real bad, that's pretty cool. Now this one, you know, Roger will go and tell the other one to kind of go in the corner, but that's about as far as he takes it. And maybe that's because they grew up together. Uh, maybe it's because I don't have a female, although maybe that other white one is a female. I don't know. But I do know that this can't be a permanent solution to fish, one, that get so much bigger, and two, that are absolutely amazing looking. So uh, Raj and his crew, they're gonna have to move to a bigger tank soon, but absolutely love these fish. Uh, definitely uh, constantly in the top five in, in the fish room in terms of my favorites. So this is our 40 gallon breeder above the Red Devil tank. This is Cryptohera Sahika. They don't get super big. They are South American cichlids that stay relatively peaceful. Uh, the tank itself has got a lot of jungle value. You can see a little bit of green hair algae growing. We're probably gonna put some guppies in here to try and clean that up as well. Uh, the, the fish, when they're breeding, they've got really nice colors. The males get much nicer colors. Uh, they lighten up a little bit, show a little bit more pink, a little bit more, uh, a little bit more color, a little bit more blue, as you can start to see there. Uh, right now, the cool thing that's going on there is in this rock structure, we have a female under there and a male. There's actually a pair. And they've been under there for a while, a number of months, and I, they've ex excavated everything. The rocks are nowhere near the way they used to look, but we're hoping that we're gonna get some breeding behavior from the pair that's under there pretty soon. Uh, it's, it's not you know, a super, super striking fish in terms of color, but it is an interesting fish. And you can see here, uh, they're kind of under the jungle valve interacting with that. But it's a nice fish. It's, it's relatively peaceful if you're looking for a fish with a little bit of personality, maybe for a community tank. This is something that could certainly fit that bill. So these are the Thrictis maculapinus. I showed you the fry in that little fish bowl. This is where they came from. This is the bottom 33 long. Uh, it's planted and they, for the most part, leave the plants alone. Every once in a while, they'll dig something up or tear something apart. Uh, we usually get two groups of, or two pairs in this tank. One that's over here, and then the other one that is on the other side. Uh, cool looking fish, they're kind of like firemouth cichlids, not as aggressive at least from what we've seen. Uh, but this is a fish that may, we may move on once we get the, the fry. Uh, we may make some space for other fish in this tank and bring these guys to a swap or an auction. But they're, they're definitely cool. Uh, I do like the tank. We'll just have to figure out if this is a permanent inhabitant of this tank. So this is the middle 33 long and here it's another Tanganyikan setup. Uh, we really like the Tanganyikan fish and in here we've got some Calypterus, we've got some Neolamprologus lupi. those are the orange ones. Uh, we also have some Julitochromus transcriptus, those are the ones that kind of look like the checkerboard pattern. Uh, it's a cool mix of fish. We also have, interestingly enough, we have a female molly, there's a guppy up there and then that female molly before the male died, she gave birth to that little baby up there. So we've got a couple mollies, a guppy, and then we have our Tanganyikan fish. Uh, I don't mind the guppy in here, don't mind the mollies. Originally, they were in here kind of as dither fish because the fish that we have in here, especially the Calypterus, are very skittish. And they hide quite a bit, and we thought by bringing in the mollies and the guppy that we would be able to get them out more, and that is exactly what's happened. And so. Uh, we get, uh, we have these guys out a little bit more and it's really, really cool. There is a big male underneath that sponge filter. There's obviously another one right here on the rocks. And there are actually females in those shells. And what's interesting is those shells were all over this 33 long when we first set up this tank. So they were everywhere. They were evenly spaced out in a very fair manner, mind you. And one of the males, that one, decided that every shell in the tank was his. So he went and got them all and put them in that big pile. Then he went and got himself three girlfriends. And those three girlfriends sit in that pile of shells. And I don't know if they're ever gonna have babies, but they seem like they are in the shells a lot. And then what's interesting is the big male who'd spent all that time getting these shells in the middle of the tank, he will allow the lelupi to kind of hang out in the shells. He doesn't mind if the transcriptus are over there. What he does mind is if any of the other clipters come anywhere near his little homestead, he chases them away. So we've got that big male over here. He's actually the biggest male, which is under the sponge filter behind that lelupi. There are other clipters 
on the other side of the tank and behind these rocks. So there's one over here. Let's see if we could see him. Kind of sticking his head out by the other sponge filter. So they've kind of got their own little areas, but unfortunately for them, they don't have their own shells. And I actually think this one is probably a female, either that or a really small male, because the males are cool when it comes to the clifters. They get a nice yellow and they get blue lips and they get a lot of color when they are, I think, trying to court the females. The females kind of stay silvery. But you know, if, if you follow us on Instagram, primetime underscore aquatics, we've taken quite a few pictures of these guys when they are really, really colored up because they look really cool. So that's the middle 33. I think at some point we'll start getting some breeding, some babies from the clifters. We'll just have to keep an eye on it, make sure none of the other fish are picking them off, uh, especially that molly, but cool tank. And I figured I would feed the clifters as well so you can get a little bit more of them. Uh, the males are starting to come out. Here's that large male. There's his shells. And again, he lets the other fish in just fine, but you can kind of see him out. So you can see she's got the spots. She is, she is in her shell. And there's another one in there as well. So there's a the big male. He's got his more blue lips. And actually, this one's probably a female as well because she's got a little bit of that same spotty color. Okay, everybody. This is our top 33 long with the Geophagus brasiliensis. And these fish are simply amazing. And I think the colors speak for themselves. This is a great fish. And this is one of the reasons why we will be adding larger tanks to the fish room because these fish will get large. They cannot be in a 33 long forever. And the, you know, I wanna see these fish at seven, eight inches at least. Uh, they're amazing. And we picked them up. They were very, very tiny. We put them in this tank. I wanted black background, black substrate because I figured that would show off their they're natural spangling the best. They're starting to get a little bit more aggressive now, at least the males are, now that they're growing larger. And that's another reason why we want to get them in a larger tank as well. Uh, we are doing a little experiment. I know this would seem absolutely crazy for some of you, but over here on this rock pile, over to the right, I actually want to see how long this blackbeard algae will get. And it's starting to flow sometimes, like when the fish swim by. And I kind of think it's cool. Uh, I know that it is very invasive, so we're trying to be very careful about making sure that it doesn't wind up in a lot of the other tanks. But it's a blackout tank. You know, it's always been something where it's been dark rocks, dark substrate, dark background. Let these fish and their colors kind of take the show when it comes to this tank. And so far, I think that's happening. They're awesome. And it's just, it's a great tank. We really like them. We're gonna get these fish in a larger space so that they can really show off their colors uh, at some point in the near future. And so let's go ahead now and we can take a look at the nine 10 gallon tanks that we have here. So we're moving on over to the 10 gallons and this tank is probably the best 10 gallon that we have. These are Rhinogobius hentuensis, uh, really super cool freshwater goby. They're interesting fish. I haven't been able to breed them yet, but they at least now are looking like they're showing some behaviors that they hadn't shown before. And that is this incredible urge to dig back there by the sponge filters. The males are quite a bit larger than the females. Uh, they generally display by kind of opening their mouth and doing a little wiggle, and they've got this really nice white part to their dorsal fins. Uh, you can see a male right there at the bottom of the screen kind of coming into the picture. Uh, sometimes they'll hang out at that cave. Sometimes, most of the time they're back by the rocks. It's a really cool fish, a lot of personality. They're not shy, that's for sure. At least not usually, but maybe with the camera in their face, yeah, they can be a little shy, but cool fish. And here you can see a male just kind of staring at us. And it's, what's really cool is when it's time to eat, they kind of all stick their bellies to the front of the glass and wait for food to come in and then they eat. So pretty darn cool fish. Again, when we do our Instagram sometimes, this is a fish that we like to try to catch on camera. They've always got a funny looking face. Here's a tank full of red zebra fry. Again, I showed you some in the other side of the fish room where we had some larger fry. We had the fish that were in the 75. The parents are in that 75 and these are all their babies. Uh, pretty cool, again, they color up right as soon as the mother spits them out, they are orange and they're really awesome fish and they get along pretty well with one another, even in a smaller space, at least that's what I found. Uh, in terms of mbunas, they're not super, super overly aggressive, but they're certainly not shy either. I certainly wouldn't put them in a community tank. 
So on the bottom tens, I'm not gonna spend a ton of time here because they're mostly just grow out tanks. Uh, I've got some white lab cichlids in here that I showed you before. Some Eureka reds are in here as well, just kind of growing out over here. These are some of the newer fish that we got, the Sinotilapia Afra Jaro Reef. They're still growing out. And then over here, and then over here we've got some Pseudotrophius ACI. These are fish that are just growing out. They will probably almost all be gone by the end of the swap and auction season, but they're awesome fish. The parents are in the 75 and Buna tank that I showed you earlier. So these are some Kenny Eye cichlids. Again, the parents were in that 75 and Buna tank that I showed you before. Uh, cool fish, the males are the ones that are turning yellow. The females are going to stay a nice blue color with blue stripes, so you get two different colors. And these are, these are a little bit more aggressive than let's say the red zebras I showed you, but they're still pretty, pretty nice fish. And again, you get two colors and it's the same fish, which is nice. Here we have a whole batch of Eureka Red cichlids. So I showed you the 55 gallon with the, the females. There's a bunch in here, maybe 25, 30, possibly more. So we're gonna let them grow up in here a little while and then we'll move them to a larger fry bin when they're, when they're a little bit larger. And in this tank, we've got some white lab fry. There's only four in here. And then what's interesting is we actually have an albino. Uh, so the mother spit out four regulars and an albino. So these are white labs. So same general demeanor as the yellow labs, just a different color. I think they're quite interesting. So the problem that we're having so far is the females, they don't have very many fry. So that's, you know, it's something to consider. We, it's taken us a little bit longer to build up a community just because they're not having huge numbers of fry. All right, everybody, so I hope you enjoyed that. It was a lot of fun for us. If you did enjoy it, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.